Hello and welcome. Thank you for spending your afternoon with us. Uh, before we begin, what we'd really actually like to do is today is basically the launch day of the book and the copies are finally out in the market and we would actually love to invite Meena's agent, David Godwin, on stage to receive the first copy of the book. I'm only here for a moment um, to launch this spectacular book. It's had the most wonderful quotes and responses to it. I'll just read you one small one from Tishani Doshi. Can you, is that better? Nice. Anyway, Electri electrifying and iridescent. Mina Kadaswamy's translations of the. I shall stop there. Uh, sear the page, unraveling an ancient grammar of love, which speaks of desire and sex, and the particular delights of a lover's sulk, all in one breath. This is a truly wonderful book, and I urge you, at the end of this session, to go over there, buy a copy, and to get Mina to sign it. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, let's get started. I was thinking, shall we just give you guys a, a really quick taste of the book and ask Meena to read out a couple of couplets and then maybe tell us a little bit about what she's reading to us. Does that sound good? So Meena, over to you. Hi, uh, thank you to everyone for coming here. And uh, I, saw, I myself would have been at some of the parallel sessions. They were really exciting. Thank you to JLF for having me. Thanks to my agent, David, for releasing the book. Um, he's really one of the most fabulous persons in my life because he lets me do whatever crazy thing I want to do. So I was in the middle of writing a novel and then I decided, no, maybe the Thirukural has to get precedence. So, um, and he put up with all of that. So I'm going to read like a short chapter from the Thirukural um, before we go into this. And I'm going to read the Tamil and the English. Um, it's called Padal, uh, Padar Melindirangal, A Lament of the Lovesick. I would, if only I could, hide this love sickness. If someone draws, it surges forth like a gushing spring. No, I cannot conceal it. No, I cannot explain this disease to the man who causes it. It is shameful. Um, there's a, the Tirukkural is a poem in two lines, so they are really short uh, kind of couplets. My life is torn between lust and shame, and this my frail body cannot bear. Um, the next one I'm going to read in Tamil as well. Kama kadal mannum unde, adu nindum yema punal mannum il. My desire is an endless sea. There is no raft to swim across safely. Um, what would be the fate of his enemies, I wonder, when he unleashes so much suffering towards his friends? Um, sex, it's pleasure, a wordless word. A sea, it's path, leading to a pain even more immense. Uh, the next one is again a favorite in Tamil. Kama kadumbunal nindi karai kanen, yamatum yane ulen. I swim the rough seas of sexual desire. I see no show. In the dead of the night, I'm alone. She lulls all life on this land to sleep, kindest night. She has no one but me to keep her company. Kodiyar kodumayin tam kodiya innal nediya kariyum ira. Crueler than my cruel one's atrocities are these late night hours dragging on painfully. The last one in this section, if, like my heart, these eyes too could travel the inner way, they would not have to swim in such flooded waters. Thank you. Meena, thank you. Uh, so when you called me and said, 
I've done a translation of the Tirukural. I can tell you how surprised I was. This is not the text that I expected you to translate. Uh, the last translation that Mina and I worked together on was a contemporary novel by the novelist Salma. And somehow I, I thought this is an ancient classical text and Meena wants to bring this, like, you know, bring out a fresh translation of it. I wonder why. And then I read it and I realized why she wanted to do it. So Meena, can you, for those of us who are not familiar with the Kural, mm. can you tell us a little bit about this 2000 year old classical text and why it's still relevant today? Uh, so um, this is a long essay type question. <laughs> I wouldn't know where to start, but I think a good place to start is um, how fresh this text is for Tamil people. Like, you know, it, you don't look at it as a text that um, is, you, you realize it's this ancient, you realize it's classical, it's got 2000 years of history, but it's very much in the everyday. People quote it on public platforms. Every, every political speech, every budget presentation, every governess address, you know, there's always a Kural being quoted, but then children memorize it in school, it's part of the school curriculum. And, you know, any television channel in Tamil, in the morning there's a show, five minutes they are trying to explain one of the Kurals to the people. So in that sense, uh, you get on a government bus, it's there, you know, it's printed there. So it's there inside classrooms, it's in every aspect of Tamil life. And uh, it's... I, I think one of the most beautiful things is how do people self-define themselves uh, and especially for uh, people who have been, um, we have been uh, very worried about identity and representation and culture and civilization, the Tirukural becomes this immense text around which our identity revolves and this is for two reasons. One of that is it's a secular text. It doesn't talk about any specific religion which is very important because Tamils, uh, you know, whether they are Tamils in Tamil Nadu or it was even the most militant radical tigers, they never wanted to ascribe a religious identity to themselves. And the second part of why this text is really important um, is the fact that, you know, compared to a lot of texts that have been seen as classical here, a text that, you know, dictate how Hinduism should be, uh, let's say, the Manusmriti, you have an ancient text that rejects caste. You have an ancient text that at the heart of his hate is anti-caste text. So everybody says, uh, and quotes the Kural, Pirappokkum yella uyirkum which says, by birth, everyone is equal. So you have this, and this is how, uh, and so therefore this text has, through the age, has been taken up by anyone who wants to be anti-caste. So Periyar, for instance, held these anti-caste uh, Thirukural propaganda meetings all through, you know, uh, Tamil Nadu, popularizing the text and saying, this is the counter to Manusmriti, this is the counter to the caste system, this is how we define and this is how we want to live our life. So uh, on the one hand, it's this tremendous political text, but also there are other aspects of this text that, you know, uh, the way it, in which it talks about uh, love or the way it talks about virtue, the way it, uh, you know, the second chapter of the Tirukural, for instance, is about the praise of rain and the importance of rain to you know, everyday life. So in the text, you, you can read this text as, you know, an environmental text, an ecological text, a text that talks about, you know, sustainable way of life, a text that foregrounds farming. So it's, it's really an enormously beautiful text which has, you know, aligned itself with, you know, Tamil culture. And it's been quoted, that's the more beautiful thing, is that how, how you know, how a text dated. So it's quoted in the Silapathikaram, it's quoted in other ancient epics as well. So uh, within the literary community, the effect of Valluvar is like, Shakespeare, he's constantly quoted. And um, some of the way, some of the tropes of writing, you know, uh, women having these fierce glances that kill, that still you see that in Tamil cinema songs, or women giving these shy, sidelong glances, that's again something that's, you know, very often portrayed on screen. So I think that, you know, it's very much the living, beating heart of a society. And I'm going to stop here, but just say one thing, is that, um, you know, the Tamils follow a calendar, uh, that's 31 years ahead of the, you know, the English European calendar. And it's because uh, the year 31 BC is, you know, the year 31 BCE is considered to be the year of the birth of Tiruvalluvar. So every year is called a Valluvar Andi. So our time, you know, we keep time in his memory. So, you know, every Tamil year is a Valluvar Andi. Like now we are in year 2032, I think, or 
whatever twelve or under it is. And the first day of the Tamil New Year is his birthday. So Thai Pongal is also Tiruvalluvar. It's considered Tiruvalluvar's birthday. So this is how I think it's ingrained into this author is ingrained into our culture and why he is so tremendously important and influential. Remarkable, and let's hope this secular text never gets co-opted by <laughs> any religion. Uh, I, I also wanted to ask you, there have been what o over a hundred translations mm -hmm. of this text so far, but to our knowledge, you are only the second woman to have done a translation of it. Why have so few women translators taken it up, and why do you think a feminist intervention is so necessary for this text? Um, so I think I think there's a general tendency that you know, uh, even outside of translation, uh, this is also very interesting because often translators tend to be women and men tend to be the the intellectuals, the one propounding the text, and women tend to be the one translating and taking it forward. I know I know this from experience. Uh, but what is very interesting is when it comes to when it comes to classical texts. There's some, you know, idea of intellectualism built into it. The idea that somehow men are better with, you know, languages, better at... It's just that they take space. It's just that, you know, the literary cliques work around them. And when it's men, you know, on the one hand, they foist all of culture and tradition on us, you know, the necessity to wear a sari, the necessity to be Tamil, the necessity to take Tamil and transmit it to the next generation. But when it comes to who can interpret Tamil, who can uh, be the spokesperson, then it's always men. It's just fierce, masculine, big dick energy <laughs> going around there. And you have to like, you know, and how I started looking at it was, you know, basically uh, my argument in this book is that right at the beginning of the Kural, he says, Anangu kol, aimail kollo, kanangulai madar kol malu menenji. So he looks at this woman and he says, is this a goddess? Uh, is this a fierce goddess? And he says, my heart is like, you know, a boat caught in a storm, like, you know, it's, it's rattled. And two Kurals down, he says, Pandariyen kutrin badana ini arindhen pendagayal peramarkattu, which means, before I did not know what is death. Now looking at her eyes, I know what is death. So, and then they're like, okay, the Tamil woman is very much there in the book, and she's putting the fear of death in you. And so why shouldn't this woman exist outside the book and talk about it? So, you know, Thirukural is a very universal text. You know, when you read, there are two lovers. And the cruel part, the love part of it is just two lovers. They're not named, there's no, who is tall, who is short, who is what color. There's none of these things that you can attach to them. Like, they are like absolutely universal lovers. And then, but the question for me is, the Tamil woman who is in the text, why is she not translating the text? This, when Thiruvalluvar imagined it, he was imagining a Tamil woman, obviously, even if it's universal, the woman. So why can't this Tamil woman be a cultural commentator? Why can't she be the person who talks about the aesthetics of the Kural? Why can't she be the person who talks about what is the grammar of love in Tamil culture? And so, so you know, like this is, a, this is, an, abs this is an emptiness. But sometimes when you see an emptiness, you have to take it for yourself. Like, I'm going to be this Tamil woman. I'm going to be the Tamil woman who is in love, who is inside the text, but I'm also going to be the paratextual Tamil woman who is going to translate this text and talk about it. So that's how it happened. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. And this book, The Book of Desire, is technically part three of the Kural. Yes. So tell us about the three parts and why structurally you picked part three. Um, so the first part is um, Aram, meaning virtue or what I would broadly translate into morality. And uh, I think the conception of morality is much more about how do you have a just society. I think that's at the heart of morality. Um, because Thiruvalluvar even says that sometimes uh, lies are better if they cause less pain than truth. <laughs> so it's a very flexible morality. So the first book is a book of morality. The second book is the book of statecraft and wealth. And the third is the book of love, desire. In Tamil, it's actually Inbam, which is pleasure. Inbatupal or Kamatupal, the book of sex. Um, and for me, uh, there are two reasons. The first is that, you know, when I was a young person, um, I studied in a Kendri Vidyalaya, ended up learning only Hindi and English. And my, fa my, Tamil fa my father is Tamil, Tamil scholar, Pulavar. 
and he felt really bad that you know his daughter was not Tamil enough. So I remember when I was in my teenage, he made me memorize all of the 1330 couplets of the Quran. So, and I used to fight with my father. I was like, everyone else is having fun. I'm a fucking teenager. And here you're like, you know, making me, I'm like, I'm, this is going to give me serious memory problems when I grow, grow old. All the bandwidth, all the GB in my head is going to be occupied by the Kuru. Like, you know, I'm not even going to pass my exams. And he was like, no, no, you're going to learn this. So I learned it by rote. Like, I could literally be like this circus monkey who could say the number of the Kuru. I could say the Kuru. You could say a single word from the Kuru. I could say where it was from. But, you know, he was a very interesting person, so he got me translations of, you know, G.U. Pope or Purnalingam Pillai or Suddhananda Bharati, and he said, read the translations. I don't want you to just to be a monkey. I want you to know the meaning and to learn them, and I, and I did learn them. Uh, and one day he took me to somebody else, and um, he was very proud to another Tamil scholar and said, look, my daughter, she knows all of the Tirukural. So my father wanted everyone to recognize that his daughter was, you know, Tamil enough in that way. And that meant, he's a, he's a doctor, he was about 60 at the time, and he turned to me and said, um, so do you have any, he, the Tamil word he used was karma anubhavam, do you have any sexual experience? And he, his, exper his idea was to say, if you've not had sex, you don't know what's in the kural. And I felt so fucking outraged. First and foremost, you're asking this question in front of my father, but also this is the way you, you're like basically slamming me down. You're just telling me like you have no business, you know, learning or knowing a classical text. And it was so dismissive, right? And so I was like, no, I'm not, I may not have experience, but that's the whole thing, you're right? Like I was a teenager. But writing and thinking and imagining is things that let you go into what you're not. I'm sure I now have like, a billion times more experience than this doctor ever had in his miserable life. <laughs> but, but so, so I realized, I realized how the gatekeeping was, and I realized that the gatekeeping actually started by, not by saying, oh, well, how is your Tamil grammar? Not by saying, what's your knowledge of, you know, the classical period, but it was like, have you had sex was the way I was dismissed. And I was like, I think at a very young age, it was like real deep hurt. And sometimes you do these things because you're hurt. So I think some of it came from that. But some of the other thing is because the first translation um, uh, of this text into Latin, I think was uh, by, by this, uh, Italian Jesuit priest, uh, Constantine Besky, I think, and uh, he called himself Vira Mamunivar in Tamil. And because he was a Jesuit priest, he did not translate the last part of the Kural because, you know, as a priest, he couldn't do the book about desire. And I think it, when the first translation actually appeared, it was oh, in English. Wait, the priest could do a translation of wealth, but not desire. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> he could do the yeah, translation on wealth, but not on desire. So I think when G.U. Pope uh, did the translation, he actually quotes a Kural and he says, uh, this Kural is from the Book of Wealth, but it says, Manatukan Masiranadal Anaitu Adarkan Agula Nirapira. That means it's only in your heart, Manatukan Masir. Your heart is that which has to be spotless. Everything else, everything about the world, all that is sound and fury. And, I, and that's how G.U. Pope says, My heart is spotless when I go into this text. My heart doesn't have any ill will, any feelings. And this is very much aligned with Victorian morality. You know, you couldn't do a book of, you know, sex or love or desire. So he has to justify, self-justify himself before going into the text. And of course, G. U. Pope, having to have all of these caveats before he does, he uses like, you know, words like union to talk about sex. You, know, you think of union, you think of a trade union. <laughs> but, or he has to use the word like congress to talk about sex. So that's where we are. Uh, that's how all the male translators have translated the text, which is why I think it necessitates a uh, feminist translation. Uh, do we have time for questions? Okay, all right, okay. I have loads more questions for you, but I think you guys do as well. So, uh, we have a mic floating around. Okay, I think there's a lady up in the third row over here. Oh, the time flew. Hello. Hi, Meena. So Hi. my question is, uh, there seems to be a project to reappropriate Tamil and particularly Tiruvalluvar. Like, does it bother you when you mention like uh, it's being used in budget speeches and other political speeches and there is a thrust to somewhere mainstream Tamil with, you know, I wouldn't say larger culture, but you know, the North this thing. So yes, uh, I can answer this question. So I think some, I think possibly it was the Irish Times which was like, why did you have to do the political framing of the text? So this is like a 200 page book and the first 50 pages 
or an essay on the Tirukkural and its history, how it was preserved, how it had to fight against Brahmanism, and how the book became central in the fight against Brahmanism. All of this, uh, and by Brahmanism, I also mean larger Hindutva, uh, but also much more than the caste system, also the enslavement of women, because this is a very democratic text where women are concerned. So, uh, so the thing is that you know, and I said, they actually uh, Hindutva forces have started portraying Tiruvalluvar dressed in saffron clothes. Now, and I'm like, this is, and then they've started up, uh, portraying him with, you know, the botte and all the sacred ash on his head. Like, why are they doing it? Why are they trying to bring him into the Hindu fold? So obviously, like, this text becomes so contentious. And everything, the, the thing is, everything he says, I mean, all of this sex, I'm not sure they Like, the Manusmriti says, don't sit next to your mother, sister, daughter, because, you know, the w women are corrupting all the time. But this is a, sex, a book that celebrates love and desire. And this is the exact opposite of what, you know, oppressive Hindutva stands for. So you, Tamil people have to resist this appropriation. They have to stand out and say, no, 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 stay in your lane. You know, so uh, it's very relevant, I guess. Any, Any other, other questions? Th yes, uh, there's the a question there, yeah. yes. Uh, hi, ma'am. Uh, thank you, thank you for the opportunity. So I had a question of multifold. One, one is, uh, like there have been, uh, in previous versions, uh, many scholars, for example, Kalanjir Karnanidhi, who have translated this, who have given his own versions of it. But you have answered the feminist point of view. And the second question is, like, uh, uh, in we, we all talked about how Thirukkural is so relevant, in, particularly in today's context. So, how can we keep this interest in the minds of the young readers? Because uh, when, when I see, even though it is written everywhere, like when uh, politicians quote it, when it is written in buses, when it is written in uh, uh, government offices, but do you feel, what is your take on it? Like, is it being properly, uh, the, the young readers who are grappling into it, is it because it is written in ancient Tamil? Uh, no, no, no. Tamil word for love is calm. I'm still the same. Tamil word kadal is the same in Kural. Um, I'm not sure it's easily, immediately understood, but I think a lot of the vocabulary, and as a translator, I can say roughly 60% of the words are still in use today. 20% are, are archaic. You can find them in the dictionary. And I think about 5 to 10%, you may have to, to really go back to the root, word, word root and find out. So, uh, so that's another thing. Um, I think the Thirukkural as a text has guided me and I'm, I look at myself as a youngish kind of person. So <laughs> there are young people who read the Kural. Um, but also I think that with this translation I always think that this is something you can read to your lover in bed because that's how the Thirukkural is, is in at least little couplets. And there's not a lot of, you know, poetry that you can read in bed to your lover but there's also something you can tweet. This is something on Insta. So this is really like, you know, very technology savvy. Like, you know, you have 240 character word limits on the Kural but but you look at any of them, they're really like, Kurul was like so advanced, like he uses only seven words in Tamil, right? So I think it's, uh, I think there's this Kural that says, Kan kalavu kollum sirinokam kamatin sembaga mandrupirudu. A little stolen glance is so much more than so much sex. Like this you can tweet, you know, so it's going to be relevant. <laughs> so, yeah. Everybody fish out your two phones and tweet this right now. Okay, we have time for one more question. So I loved your talk about this, and as a fellow South Indian, I wanted to ask a question about uh, how you talked about Chirapati Garam and you know role of women. So as Kanagi has done such a powerful move, burned the city with her throwing a bare breast for her husband for justice, and even in European culture we have goddesses like Athena, Hestia standing for justice. But why do you think uh, India or you know the our continent as a whole has taken a step back? in placing women in justice as a, you know, uh, even though our law, law is, you know, supported by women and, you know, I think, why do you think, according to your book and from Tirukkural, the role of women has gone back rather than advanced in the, even though we have equality and feminist movements and etc. from old in each that is. Um, well, this is a long question. I don't know. I am trying to be very brief. So one of the questions is, and this is every single translator of the Kural in English uses the word nirai to mean chastity. But Kural, the word nirai in Tamil doesn't mean chastity. Nirai means fullness. Nirai means self-contentment. And when Thiruvalu talks about women, he says, Sirai kaakum kaapu yevan sayyum magalir nirai kaakum kaape thalai. What's the use of prison-like vigilance? It's women who have to, you know, 
worry about themselves. So, you know, you become free only by being autonomous. And it's only by being autonomous that you're being secure. So I think that, you know, but that's the thing, that's what translation does. You know, you put Nirai as chastity, then immediately you're putting chastity as virginity, you're putting women into these boxes. And I think the reason women are oppressed is the same reason why all the marginalized, whether it's Dalits or Adivasis are oppressed, which is that otherwise you'd have an equal society, you'd challenge the status quo, women are seen as dangerous because they are, you know, powerful, because they're intelligent, and you have to keep them in their place to keep the caste structure in place. So, you know, and these are later incursions into Tamil society, I would say. So that's my answer. Thank you. I think. That brings us to the close of this session. I really, really think all of us have so many more questions for Meena. So please find her afterwards, get your copies signed, and ask her all the questions that you have. Thank you, Meena.